Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are all of the books that I plan to be reading in April. Now I know this video is a little bit late, but it just, it is what it is. I'm finally getting around to filming it. Um, so I've already dived a little bit into my TBR, but I'm not gonna be telling you what books I've already read. You'll see that in my April wrap up. <laughs> so I have kind of a shorter list than I normally do because there's no readathons as I'm aware of right now that are happening in April. I've not heard anything. Again, I only have Instagram as a social media account right now, so I don't get all the buzz like on Twitter or anything because Twitter's not my thing really. So if you know of any like romance readathons, let me know. Um, I may or may not be participating. Um, the end of April is like towards the end of term for university. So, um, <laughs> uh, really excited about that. <laughs> I'm excited for school to be over, but um, I got a little bit of a ways to go till I get there. So my TBR is a little bit less than what I normally put on there. Um, so this video might be shorter than normal. So who knows? Let's just dive right on in. First, I really want to pick up Wicked Abyss by Cressy Cole. This is book number 17 in the Immortals After Dark series. And it is the last book that I have to read in this series before I am completely caught up. 17 flippin' books, y'all insane. I'm not gonna be reading the summary because I don't want to know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I love to go into all these books and part of the Immortals After Dark series completely blind. I think I get my best reading experience doing that. This is just a paranormal romance series dealing with a bunch of lore creatures. If you love mate books, please check out this series. Like it's, every book is surrounded by me. So then I have another 17th book in a series to read. We have The Savior by J.R. Ward. Um, I haven't heard the best things about this book, but it is the next book in the um, Black Tiger Brotherhood that I have to read. I've kind of gotten like a little bit off the bandwagon with this series. I don't think I love it honestly as much as the Immortals After Dark series and I'm like shocked that I'm saying that but I feel like I love more books in the Immortals After Dark series than I do this series. I don't know. I haven't read one in a while so we'll see. Um, if you didn't know about the Black Tiger Brotherhood series this is a vampire romance paranormal series where vampires are real and they're like a secret society in the world um, that humans don't know about and there is a brotherhood called the Black Dagger Brotherhood where they basically protect the vampire race and so each book is about a um, one of the vampires a part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood um, most of them are part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood them falling in love with their mate finding their mate super duper fun um, I don't think we've been introduced to the character in this book yet like the savior I think we know about him but we haven't like seen him really on page all that much um, so I don't know how I'm gonna like this one because we haven't really been introduced to him before but again I want to be caught up with the series and I have a few other books to go um, to be caught up with this series and the um, like companion spinoff series uh, it's a black dagger legacy Le deck I don't remember it's the it's the one about the younger vampires that I really enjoy too. Next, I really want to read All the Stars Look Down by Elizabeth Hunter and Grace Draven. So I'm trying to read all of Grace Draven's backlist, if you did not know, as well as a bunch of other other authors, three other authors. I'm trying to read all their backlist by the end of 2021. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but we will see. Um, I'm trying to read all their books that I have not read so far yet. I'm gonna go back and read them in publication order. So this is the next one on the list that I have through Libby. The only thing I know about this one is that it is um, both stories are Christmas romances, which I'm perfectly fine with reading Christmas romances not in the Christmas season. I've done it before. I did it last month. I have fun all year round, you know? Why not read them all year round? <laughs> the cover just looked really, really pretty to me. And again, I'm just trying to read Grace German's backlist. So I don't know a lot about this one. Next, I actually have my current read that I'm in love with. We have Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. <laughs> this is the, uh, third book a part of the brown sisters series this book i don't know i'd have to reread get a life chloe brown but this may or may not be my favorite in the series we will see because get a life chloe brown is my favorite i liked that one more than danny brown i know i'm in the minority but that was just me i connected to chloe so much because we both have chronic illnesses and everything but this book is so adorably cute and like just amazing and the rave reviews that it is receiving it's so worth it it is true it lives up to the hype i swear so this is about our third sister a part of the brown family we have eve and she has been known to be like quite like flighty and um 
she uh, likes to come in and out of hobbies and jobs and her at the beginning of the book her parents are like we're cutting off your trust fund until you have a stable job for a year because this is getting ridiculous and you're 26 you live at home you haven't had a steady income ever and so uh, this will hopefully be your push that you need to go get a job so Eve goes to go do that and then she stumbles upon a uh, bed and breakfast I believe that's what a bed and breakfast um, where they're looking for a chef and there she meets Jacob <laughs> so cute. I really love the representation all of Talia Hibbert's books. She puts so much representation in all of her books. I freaking love it. This is very much a grumpy sunshine dynamic book. Like it is so stinking cute. So Jacob is very standoffish and like broody and immediately doesn't like Eve when she comes into the room because like for the interview because uh she's not like put together. She's wet from the rain and like he likes everything to be pristine and crisp and clean and like very organized and that doesn't seem like the type of person Eve is so he's very put off by it but he's kind of in a bind so he ends up hiring her kind of unwillingly you read in the book why like it's them becoming friends <laughs> if you didn't know friends to lovers is like I love I love friends to lovers like so much and like this I feel like is just so good but it also has the hate to love element in there too or like dislike because Jacob just does not like Eve right off the bat and Eve is very put off by how judgmental he is at first but she comes to accept him and grows to become friends with him and this is I'm like halfway through I'm literally at 50% at the moment I've been listening to it all day long and I am obsessed with it um so I'm definitely going to be finishing that by the end of the month by the end of the day probably by the way this is looking this is gearing to be my favorite book of the year so far so I'm very excited you'll know my thoughts in my um April wrap up. So I never used to uh, check ebooks out through Libby because I'm more of an audiobook person but then like I started to realize that like the ebooks through Libby are just kind of like Kindle Unlimited and like there's basically no difference. You just you can have more books to check out and so I'm like that is so dumb. I need to go look at my ebook selection on Libby. And so I did and I found um, Forever Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is book number 2.5, a part of the Simple Wild series. And I actually really enjoyed the Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I read book number two and I actually have a vlog for it down below. I didn't enjoy it as much, unfortunately. I know that some people love it, some people hate it. I feel like you're on one scale or the other. Um, I was kind of like just meh about it because I love our characters, Kala and Jonah, who you met in the first book and everything I love their story and I love how we got like more into their like lives and everything and normally I'm I'm a very character driven reader like I read books for the characters however there were things in the second book that really rubbed me the wrong way and I think I talk about it in the vlog and in my review but something specifically that bugged me I don't even know if people caught on with it but at the end of like every chapter or after every discussion that the characters have they'd go and like do it like do it you know and it just it rubbed me the wrong way like why do you have to end a conversation every single almost every single conversation with that like it bugged me it bugged me because like that's not how you resolve things and that's not how every conversation ends and it just it rubbed me the wrong way and so that's just one of the many things that rubbed me the wrong way about that book and so I'm hoping that this book will hopefully be better than that. <laughs> this book is only 158 pages and I don't know anything about it except that it is a um, novella that continues the story of Kala and Jonah. I think it's during the holiday season. So again, another I guess another holiday book in April. We're gonna be diving into a uh, Christmas. Wow, <laughs> we're in April. Christmas in April, I guess. <laughs> Next I have Coming In From The Cold by Serena Bowen, the first book in the Gravity series. I personally have really liked Serena bo Bowen's books in the past. I feel like this is one of her earlier works that not a lot of people have read before. I don't think any of my friends has read this yet. Nope, I don't think so on Goodreads. Um, but I think that this might have disability rep in it, which is the reason why I put it on hold at my through Libby because I got it in as an audiobook. He can't have her and he can't tell anyone why. Sky Racer Dane Danger Hollister. That's a long name and title. <laughs> Uh, does not do relationships. Though he keeps his reason a secret, the real life curse he's inherited from his mother will eventually cost him everything. His place in the Olympic ski team, his endorsement income, and his ability to fly downhill at top speed. Reluctant country girl Willow Reed meets Dane by accident, literally. 
Her skiing truck forces him off the road during a blizzard. Stranded together in his Jeep as night falls, the two loneliest people in Vermont find themselves sharing more than they planned and not just conversation. Yet neither can guess how their unlikely tryst will threaten Dane's frightening secret and Willow's tentative peace with her own choices. Only mutual trust and understanding can end their pain and give them a hard one shot at love. So this I feel like also is a um, forced proximity romance. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you love forced proximity, maybe read it with me in April. <laughs> okay, next I think I have a book that I put on a previous TBR and I just haven't gotten to it yet. I don't remember if it was on my March TBR or not. Um, this is A Lady by Midnight by Tessa Dare, book number three in the Spittle Cove series. I'm trying to read all of Tessa Dare's backlist and so I'm trying to read all of the books a part of the Spittle Cove series. Um, the Spittle Cove series is basically about a woman who each book is about a woman who lives in Spindle Cove. Spindle Cove is a um, like little town or city that um, our heroine from the first book her and her father created for spinsters and women who are outcasts who want a vacation from society and everything. It's basically just a town full of like girls trying to be independent and live a free and happy life. And so each book is about one of those women um, finding their love. I think this one is about um, one of the women in Spindle Cove and then like a um, like a soldier I think I think that's what it is or a captain a captain a part of the army maybe sounds very interesting I love Tessa Dare's books and so um, I'm slowly gradually liking um, the Tessa Dare books a part of the Smundle Cove series more and more as I read them okay the next three are books that I plan to be reading for classes um, so I'm not going to be going too deep into them for my Eastern European class I'm going to be reading The Door by Magda Sasbo um, I don't know anything about this I don't know what it's about but it has to do with Eastern Europe so I'm going to be reading that. And then I have two books, two books, a part of uh, my young adult literature class. I think I have one more that I have to read, maybe, or maybe not. I don't remember. Um, but we have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. We're currently reading and studying this one. Um, I rewatched the movie with my mom over Easter weekend and I thought it was great, really like this. Um, and then I'm going to be reading The Crossover by, I think it's Kwame Alexander. Kwame. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. I'm horrible. I think this is a book about brothers or um, brothers who are twins, maybe, who play basketball. And it's won quite a few awards. Um, I know that there's also a graphic novel about this that everybody loves. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one as well. I'm also trying to read all of Ruby Dixon's backlist. If you didn't know, Ruby Dixon is an alien romance writer, predominantly an alien romance writer. And so the next one on my list is when she's ready which is the first book a part of the risdiverse series again i'm trying i'm reading her books in publication order like i'm going back and reading them in publication order um besides her like first books that are shifter books that i have not gotten my hands on yet less than 100 page novella um just about like a woman who lives on this uh, planet called R the Rizda, Rizdaverse, or it's Rizda, I don't remember. Um, but uh, she has this farm and she needs to get married to have her husband protect her on the farm and everything because people want to steal her farm. Very short, very interesting, very Ruby Dixon. <laughs> um, they're not my favorite thing. I much would rather read a, an Ice Planet Barbarian book, but um, they're still a lot of fun to read and to get my mind off of things you know then i'm going to be trying to read the existence of amy by lana grace riva i don't know all that much about it all the back says is amy has a normal life that is if you were to go by the definition of no obvious indicators of peculiarity and you didn't know her very well she has good friends a good job a nice enough home this normality however is precariously plastered on top of a different life a life that is amy's real life the only one her brain will let her lead um i don't know much about it the um publisher the author um sent this book to me um for review and i'm going to be doing a um or i'm in the process of making a video like a dedicated reading vlog with some books in it and this will be in that one. I hope this is a romance. If it's not, I don't know if I'd give it a high rating, but this book was sent to me a very long time ago and one of my goals for 2021 was to read all of my arcs that were sent to me or books that were sent to me for review by publishers um, and so this is one of many that I have to get to. I just remembered I didn't do my TBR jar pick of at the beginning so i'll be doing it at the end now <laughs> um but then we have uh, just a heartbeat away by cara cara bastone i've heard amazing things about this book specifically from ashley from ash heart books um she said this is an age gap romance and she absolutely loves it and so um i have the audiobook in on libby and so i'm going to be listening to this one because i've just been dying to read this one ever since she first um told me to read it i found a copy i think one day at half price books and just like 
it, I think it was like a sign that I needed to read it. So um, there you go. I will hopefully be reading this. All I know is that it's an age gap romance. I believe it's a significant age gap. And he, oh, he is a dad. I think it's a single dad. He's a, he's widowed. And I think this might be his son's teacher? Possibly? Yes, I think that's what it is, if I remember correctly. And then I really want to try and read another historical. Um, I'm trying to maybe try to get to like my physical historical shelf. Um, I'm kind of like reluctant to kind of because of my TBR jar pick for the month of March, if you didn't know. That was a disaster because I picked up Heartless by Cat Martin, which is a book that I've had for a very long time. I DNF'd it because it was bad. If you want to know why I hated it, go check out my vlog. It's it's linked down below. The thumbnail may look cute. I took that picture of the thumbnail before I read it. So I'm not smiley and cheery the whole time. No, I did not like it. Um, so I've been wanting to read more historicals, but I'm kind of hesitant because of just like the experience that book gave me was not good. And so I like like Tessa Dare historicals and everything. It's just, I think it's hard for me to get into a new author, you know, because I did not like that new author <laughs> and so i'm gonna see if this is the first book in a series wait let me go check first let me check oh dang it's not the first in a series fooey this is the second one but i wanted to read the dragon and the jewel by uh virginia henley because look how beautiful that is but i don't know what's the first one called the first one is called oh my gosh the cover is stunning <gasps> i want that can i have that book if someone has that book can I have it? Please, I want it. This is called The Falcon and the Flower. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. I want that book. <gasps> Dang. Okay, if you've read this book, please let me know. I might check this one out somewhere, trying to find out where I can find this book um, because I really want to get to this one because this one is one of my prettiest books ever because look at the like iridescent foiling, the gold foiling, really pretty. And then I might be buddy reading a book with Heather from Hia Booktubes, we will see. I think both of our schedules are a little bit busy at the moment, but I reached out to her because I'm trying to do a buddy read, one buddy read with somebody each month just to get closer to my friends and everything because I love you all so much. Um, so we will see. Yeah, Heather and I haven't agreed on a book yet, so we'll see if we actually do that. <laughs> and then lastly, we're going to be picking a book for my TBR jar. I pick one book from my TBR jar every single month and whatever book I pick out of here, I have to read it and then do a dedicated reading vlog for it. I have one for the month of February. I did um, a series of unfortunate events. The first book, The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. And then I attempted to do Heartless by Cat Martin in March. Um, again, that was a disaster because I DNF'd and hated that book. We're gonna be picking this one which is, I already read that one, Bride Test by Helen Huang. I already read that. Cool. can take that out of the jar. Let's do this one. I just read that one too. <laughs> nope. I just read that one. That was only A Breath Apart by Katie McGarry and um, that will be in my March wrap up. Okay, we're going to be picking this one instead. Which is Sor Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Okay, if you can, I don't even, you don't need to see it, but it's Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Um, this is a young adult book. Um, let me go grab it. Okay, this is an absolutely stunning book. I believe that Melissa got this for me. Yes, Melissa from She's an Open Book. She got this for me either, I think two Christmases ago, which thank you very much, Melissa, for that. I actually really liked An Enchantment of Ravens. Like, I thought it was good. Like, I liked it, which is the first book, a part of this, um, is it duology series? Um, this book is, I think, maybe takes place in the same world. Um, I'm gonna see if it has the audiobook on Libby. So all I know about this book is that this deals with a, um, like, and it's in a fantasy land. I think it's the same land as, um, An Enchantment of Ravens, and our heroine is, um, a librarian and, like, some, like, book escapes from one of the books uh, one book escapes i'm dumb one of the powers that's inside of the book i think the books have like magical powers like escapes from the book like this is her thing her journey to go and like get the book back or the power that's in the book or something again i don't know a lot about it i'm going to be going into this book completely blind so if you want to know my thoughts while reading this be sure to check out my dedicated reading vlog that will come up either at the end of april or at the beginning of may hopefully i like this one way more 
than the last book that I read for this challenge for myself. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I plan to hopefully be reading in the month of April. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Also, if you want to buddy read any of these books with me, please let me know. I love to buddy read with all of my lovely friends here on YouTube. Uh, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all. Thank you.